Let's take a look at one of the two cornerstone questions that we ask in calculus, and that is, how can we generalize the notion of slope to something that's not a straight line? Let's take a look, for example, at the function f of x is x squared minus x. That's a parabola. It opens up. It's got roots at 0 and 1. And I want to know, really, how do I define the slope when x is 2? Well, you can see that when x is 2, this function is going up from left to right, so whatever we get for a slope ought to be a positive value. And if we kind of estimate it, we can see that it has a slope that's close to whatever that might be, 2 or 3 or 4 or something like that. So one way of doing that is to take a point that's close to 2 and on the curve. So let's go over by a unit and put in 3 and see what happens when we put 3 into the function. When we put 3 in, we get out 6. Okay, what's the slope of the line through 2, 2, and 3, 6? Well, this is the line we're looking at. It's called a secant line. According to this, the slope is 4. Let's see if we can plug it into the formula and get the slope out. So our first question is going to be, what's the slope of the line through the function x squared minus x between x equals 2 and x equals 3. Let's rewrite that here. Find the slope of the line through f x equals x squared minus x at x equals 2 and at x equals 3. OK, so the slope is the change in y over the change in x. We find the y values by putting the numbers into the functions. So slope is f of 3 minus f of 2 over 3 minus 2. We put 3 into the function, we get 9 minus 3. We put 2 into the function, we get 4 minus 2. All right, so we get 6 minus 2, and then 3 minus 2 is 1. We come up with a slope of 4. And sure enough, there we have the slope of 4. Now, the idea is, what happens if we get a kind of a trend? We take this point, and we start sliding it closer and closer and closer down until it gets as close as possible to 2. So let's put in a slider. There's my slider. It's a length of 1 right now. And what we're going to do is slide this slider down and see what happens to this slope. And if we slide over a little bit, we can see the slope here. As we slide the slider, it's really close to apparently 3. And then someplace in here, oops, it's undefined. We'll see because we're dividing by 0. But it's apparently on either side getting really close to 3. And that's what we want to study. Let's see if we can do this algebraically and kind of prove that this slope is getting close to 3. What's the slope going to be then? We'll just say slider value is h. Find the slope of the line through f of x is x squared minus x at x equals 2, and at x equals, instead of 3, we're going to put in the arbitrary 2 plus h. OK, let's follow the algebra. It's a little complicated. The slope is the function at 2 plus h minus the function at 2 over 2 plus h minus 2. Now on the bottom, this are always going to cancel. We're just going to have plain old h on the bottom. On the top, we have to take 2 plus h and put it both places the letter x is in the function. So we've got 2 plus h squared minus 2 plus h. And then we subtract off 2 plus h. And then we subtract off the value of 2, 2 squared minus 2. So we get, when we foil it all out, 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 2 minus h minus 2. Simplify that all down. We get h squared plus 3h over h. OK, that's the slope. Let's take a look at that idea. h squared plus 3h over h. If h is not 0, we can cancel the h out and get h plus 3. But if h is 0, it's undefined. So technically, when h is almost exactly 0, the slope is almost exactly 3. And in Newton's day, that was enough for Isaac Newton. He said, therefore, if h is 0, the slope is 3. In fact, of course, if h is 0, the slope is undefined. And so we have to do a little more precision as we think about this than simply saying pretty close to 0 gives us pretty close to 3. And that's where we get the whole discussion of limits. So the basic idea as we're studying limits is going to be what happens when we eliminate this divide by 0 problem.
So as you're going through the whole section on limits and continuous, the whole reason we're doing this is so that we can see technically what happens as we get close to but not exactly zero. And we're going to need this precision when we get to trig functions and things that don't have this simple divide by zero problem that we can eliminate. So as you're looking at limits, the game will often be to play around with the algebra till you can cancel out the divide by zero problem. Like in this case, we can factor the h out of the top and cancel it with the h in the bottom. And then magically stick a zero in, even though you couldn't stick a zero in before. And that's where we have to get to these technical definitions. So it seems kind of silly maybe as you're going through, but the game as you're studying evaluating limits is going to be how can I eliminate the divide by zero problem. And the reason for that is that we're headed for finding the slopes of these lines at a single point. We're going to call it the slope of the tangent, and that's what we're going to define as the derivative.